What's up guys, welcome to the quarantine, I'm your host Wolf, and today we're going to take a look at Battlestar Galactica, the board game. Battlestar Galactica plays two, no sorry, three to six players, and it's by Fantasy Flight. Now, it is a hidden trader game based on the series of the same name that was released in 2004, it's the new one, I think that's where it's, when it started. Battlestar Galactica is actually one of the easiest games I've ever had to teach anybody. Let's take a look at how it plays. Alright, Battlestar Galactica, and I really need to move this light that's above here. Yeah, but whatever. Battlestar Galactica. Now, I don't have any fancy inserts with this, but it doesn't really need it at the moment. And I also would like to add, point out, I do not have any of the expansions, um, but possibly later. So these are all the, this is everything that comes with it. You got all your character cards. Of course it's Fantasy Flight, so it's going to have some pretty good components. It doesn't come with these bags. I have them. These are for damage counters and stuff like that uh, that you pull out blindly. You have all of these tokens and... Oh, apparently that's open. Um, and then you have the minis, which I have painted. Which, let's see, you'll be able to see a little bit better later. But I have painted. But it comes with these minis. And then, of course, Fantasy Flight loves their mini cards. And they love all cards, so you have all of these. So let's set up a quick, uh, quickly set up the board, kind of, for Battlestar Galactica, and let's take a look at it. Alright, this is, ba is basically Battlestar Galactica set up. The only difference is you're going to take two We House Roll 3, because it's harder to card count, uh, from each one of these decks, and you're going to build what's called the Destiny deck, which I'll get to later. So everybody is going to pick one of their favorite characters from the show, and again, keep in mind, I don't have any of the expansions. Also, I'm putting this at a different angle here to see if uh, I like this better, uh, so let me know in the comments. But, if you notice, you got pilots, political leaders, and military leaders, and you're going to have your stacks, and then of course you have Chief, wherever the hell he's at. Uh, Chief. You have support. He's the only blue one, uh, in the base game anyways. So you're going to have them in stacks. Sorry, I keep kicking the camera. And so if I decide I'm going to pick a military, le military leader, I'm going to wind up getting these three and go, I want to be a military leader. So let's see, do I want to be Kara Thrace, Leo Dama, or Sharon Valeri? Uh, and I'm going to pick my favorite character from the show, and I'm going to do, uh, I'm being Starbuck. Starbuck's awesome. And then because I picked one out of here and there's only two, and then there's political and what is it? Political and military that now have three in them. The other players have to choose one from those two. You always have to choose from the highest uh, one, whichever one has the most. Um, and I'm going to try not to get. I know I say this every damn review, but I'm going to try not to go too far into detail because this is a review, not a tutorial. But anyways, uh, everybody's going to pick their characters, and each character has. Uh, and there goes my phone. Each character has uh, this cool little er every turn that they get. You know, while you're, let's see, when you start your turn following a viper, you may take two actions during your action step instead of one. And then you have a once per game, and then you have a flaw, which hers is whenever a player chooses you with the admiral quarters location, reduce the difficulty by three, which is huge. And then you're gonna draw these these cards, so two purple, two red, and one either green or blue. And then you're gonna do that every turn, including your first. You draw this to do your, get your starting hand, and then you draw five more as your first turn. So you, at the start of your first turn, you should have ten cards. And all the backs of these cards are the same, but you separate them. You know, they're all yellow cards. And you separate them and put them here, so that way everybody knows what colors what. And generally, you put the discard pile right next to it as well. So then you just flip them over, shuffle, and put them right back down. So, and then once everybody's gotten set up, you set the board up just like this. And you get a base star down up front, three little raiders, two vipers at the launch bay, the viper launch uh, bays, and then two civilian ships. Because if you know anything about the show, uh, the remnants of humanity rest with the Galactica. Uh, there's a bunch of civilian ships floating around, but Galactica is their teeth, essentially. And then once all that's set up, make sure all of these dials, which you probably may or may not be able to see, are at the starting arrow. Gen they're all facing straight up. Um, the way the game is won is if players, and I'll explain this more in a second, get to Kobold. Or, yeah, Kobold. Or, they lose if 
any one of these dials get to zero, Galact or Galactica blows up. That is how the players just lose. Now, once everybody's chosen their characters and everything's set up and whatnot, then you're going to use the book, which probably the one thing that I dislike about the game is there is, right here, Admiral and President, and it is a um, line of succession, which with the show, I guess, makes sense, but in either way. So you're going to hand out the Admiral and the President title. Both of them have benefits, like the Admiral gets access to two nukes throughout the game, which do devastating damage. The President, and he also gets to choose where they go when they jump, which, again, I'll get to later. The President gets access to the Quorum deck. He's the only per they're the only person that gets access to these. These cards are ridiculously powerful. They can just send somebody to the brig. Or you can assign a vice president. So if vice presidency is ever taken from you, it has to go to the VP. Um, release silent, silent mug shots where you can uh, uh, look at the loyalty card of somebody. Stuff like that. These are ridiculously powerful, but they're finite. And you have a hand limit of 10, if I'm not mistaken. So the, uh, the president will get this and draw one card. That's their starting card. Inspirational speech. Roll a die on a six or higher, gain one morale, uh, and remove this card from play. Otherwise, no effect and discard this card. So, that's what they get. Then, depending on the number of players, the sweet spot that I've found with this game is five players. Because it allows for two Cylons, and then three up to two Cylons, and three players. So what you're going to do is, for a five-player game, you're going to take... There's a bunch of UR Cylon cards. I think there's four of them. I've never used the Sympathizer, so I'm actually not going to mention anything with that. Because you use it in a three-player game, and I've never used that. So you're going to take these. The UR Cylon cards. Those are right there. You're going to shuffle them up. And you're going to take two. Because you're. let's just say we're playing a five-player game. You're going to take two. Then, because you're playing a five-player game, you're going to add seven more to make ten cards. And you're going to shuffle them up real good. Now, at this point, if there's any special um, things that are going to happen, for example, um, Boomer, she's going to get a total of three loyalty cards. So in this case, you're going to need one more You Are Not a Cylon card to compensate for that. And there's a couple other ones that you, you might need to do that too, but you do that afterwards. And then you shuffle these out, or shuffle these up. Um, I can't talk today, apparently. But you're going to shuffle these up. And then you're going to fan them out or deal them out or however you want. We prefer fanning them out because it was, you know, it's your fault that you weren't a Cylon or it's your fault that you were a Cylon. And so you're going to fan these out and somebody's going to pick, you're going to pick one. Unless you are, uh, what's his face? Uh, I hate the guy, Guy's Baltar. Then, you know, you single-handedly cause the fall of mankind. So you get two. You statistically have the highest odds of being a Cylon in the beginning. So you're going to pick one. And... It's recommended there's flavor text on the You Are Not a Cylon card. At least pretend for, you know, five, ten seconds to read your card. Because this You Are Cylon cards actually have what happens when they reveal. So that way it gives them a fair chance to be able, the Cylons, a fair chance to be able to read what they're going to be able to do when they reveal that they're a Cylon. So, and then so... Everybody, one, two, three, four, five. So you're going to put these over here in your Cylons. Now let's just... Well, yeah. Fuck it. Uh, so we, in this case, we would have one Cylon. But it's all secret, so these are all around. And then the remaining cards... Remember, there's one... Only one of those Cylon cards are here. The remaining of these are going to be set off to the side. We generally put that next to the, uh, de the destination deck here. And then you go ahead and play. And that's, that's all there, there is to it. And you go, uh, starting with, if I'm not mistaken, President always goes first. Uh, starting with the President, this is the first player token that we always forget to pass around. Um, but President would go first, and they're going to, let's just say this is the President marker. You get one move and one action. So you can move any freely around Galactica, or you can move over to Colonial 1, by discarding one of your cards that you have in your hand. I mean, I'm going to pull these out to show you. Okay, um, Discard one of your hand, you can move over to here to one of these. And then as an action, you can either, and I know you're not going to be able to see, and this camera's a piece of shit, so I'm not even going to try, but 
on every location there is an action except for sick bay. So it says, for example, armory, action, attack a centurion on the boarding party track, destroyed on a roll of seven or eight. Um, communications, look at the back of two civilian ships, you may then move them to adjacent areas. So you can take the action of the location you're in. Or, all, some of, yeah, there we go, uh, some of the cards have action on them, which I know you probably can't see. This is action, so I can play Consolidate Power. So as my one action, I can play this, and then drew, draw two skill cards of any type, that may, and they can come outside of the skill type. So that would be my action. Then, you draw a Crisis card, and this happens at the end of every single player's turn. It's these backs. And you're going to flip them over. And that's not really a good one for demonstration. Come on. Probably should have stacked this a little better. All right. You're going to draw, generally, a crisis that kind of looks like this. And you have three colors. If you notice, finally, correspond to these here. Then you have a number up here. And then you have a pass and a fail effect. And then you might have, like, if you fail but you get above this amount, something or get at least this amount, something happens. Then what you're going to do is use these cards and the numbers that are listed. So in this case, purple, red, and blue count as positive. And you're trying to get the number up here, which in this case is 10. So starting with the person to the left of the active player is going to place cards face down. So, and you're allowed to, you're not allowed to say exactly how much or what color you put in, but you can give general idea. I put in about half, and in our table, half is within two of half. So I put in, you know, you put in as many cards as you want, but keep in mind, you're not getting cards until your next turn. And there's a crisis for every player. So I put in two cards, I could do about half. All right, they do this, they do this, they do this, they do this. And then the uh, president, or not president, the active player is always goes last. Then you take two cards from Destiny and put them here, because you can shuffle that up after you made your Destiny deck. And then shuffle them up. And then you reveal them, and again, you know, check the positive numbers, all right? Green and yellow in this case, two random ones I picked, are considered negative. So this is at a negative three, four. So this failed. Um, because there is no, maybe there's not a Cylon, it gives the Cylon the ability to really screw things over, because everybody knows there's a Cylon on board, but who is it? Um, you also have, so then there's that. Then you have other types of cards where the Cylon fleet warps in and does all sorts of bad shit. Or you have other cards that are just, uh... Of course, I'm not going to... Oh, there we go. President chooses. So the president, and the president alone, gets to make this d decision. Then there's admiral chooses. Then there's current player, choo current player chooses. There you go. Current player chooses. You can either choose to make this test, or you can just roll a die on a four or lower, place three raiders in front of Galactica, and one civilian ship behind it. Do you want to gamble? Maybe that's the better option. Do you want to lose all of those cards? Maybe have a Cylon just screw it over, which is minus one population. What are you going to do? So it winds up being a very tense game. And then after that, you know, these activate. This activates certain ships in the Cylon fleet if they're out here. This advances, which I didn't pull out, advances a little marker you have here over by one. And that's basically the game. That is how you. That is what happens every. Uh, did I? There we go. That's what happens every turn. That's it. Um, let me go ahead and state a couple other things here. Um, I had something in mind. I just don't remember what it was. Oh, some of the actions consist of, like, you can get into a Viper. There's little round tokens that I didn't pull out. They're over here somewhere. That you put under here for, like, Carrot Trace, actually, or Thrace has one. You would put under here, and you are actually piloting this Viper. So you can come over here, or you can go to Command and Command and Man Vipers. You can come over here and then use the die that I don't know what the hell happened to, and you'll roll it and maybe do destroy some raiders, get them off the board. Raiders have a predetermined, in the back of the book, it has a, um, I don't know what to call it, but it's basically got a list, and you just do it in order. 
of all right is there are there player man ships in the area if so, then the raiders are going to fire it, it first. If they blow it up, then they're going to fire unmanned. If there's no unmanned, then they're going to try to make their way to the nearest civilian ship and blow it up. If there's no civilian ships on the board, they're going to damage, try to damage Galactica directly. Um, and you basically just follow that in terms of when these activate or these spit out. You know, the base star spits out uh, raiders. Then you have heavy raiders, which if they ever make it here... And activate again, they smash into Galactica, and you get one of these tokens that comes over here. If this ever reaches the end, humans just lose. And I keep kicking this. Humans just lose. I mean, Cylons have, take, have fully taken over Galactica and killed everybody on board. And then you have these Vipers. Are they Vipers? No, these are... Uh, why well, can't it? Raptors. You have these little raptors, which again, I painted, and my camera will not zoom in on them for whatever reason. But these are do nothing but there are certain um, crises, and there's certain cards that, like, risk a raptor, roll a die on a 4 plus, you can look at the next crisis card, put it on top or bottom. If it's less than that, destroy the raptor. So they're basically just uh, finite currency, is, is really all they're useful. So now, once this fills up, you're going, the Admiral, and the Admiral only, is going to draw two of these de uh, destination cards, and he's going to look at them privately. The ultimate goal is you need to get to eight. Let's put that down here. You need to get to eight, and that is the number at the bottom of these destination cards. So you're going to need to jump quite a few times, and so you're going to need crisis cards that have this. So the Admiral is going to look at these and go, all right, well, we can go jump two distance, and we lose one fuel and one morale because it's deep space and there's nothing around and the crew's going insane. Or, we can go to a Tilium planet. We only go one distance. However, we lose one fuel. The Admiral may risk one Raptor to roll a die if three or higher. Gain two fuel, otherwise destroy the Raptor. That might be really good if fuel's starting to become a problem. Because let me tell you, I have lost games because one of those have gone... And every one of them has been... Uh, I. I I'm trying to think of the best way to explain that. Games that I've lost, each one of these has contributed to at least one time. Uh, food is probably the least essential, but it, I've still lost a game because food dropped. So the Admiral Guard, right, we're gonna, you know, we don't need fuel, so we're gonna go to deep space, and you put it here. Take this this card, put it face down on the bottom of the destination deck, so nobody knows what it is. Because if you're Cylon, you don't want them to go very far. You're wanting to screw them up. Um, and then, so you jump, you reset that, you do whatever the card says, and then you continue on. Now, once you get to four distance, right here, you hit the sleeper phase, which is probably my favorite part of the game. That deck, that's the wrong, oh, there we go. That deck that we put off to the side, you're going to fan these out again. And now everybody's going to uh, everybody's gonna take one, except for Boomer's going to take two. And then everybody takes one more. So let's just say, hypothetically, these were, these were my cards. This is the one that I had in the beginning. Now I drew this. Suddenly my Cylon Protocol has been activated. I've been helping Galactica this whole time. Now I have to figure out how the fuck I'm going to tank all this crap. And so it winds up becoming a really tense game, because once you hit that halfway mark, you don't know who to trust anymore. So, but anyways, uh, that's basically Battlestar Galactica. There's a couple of, a few other things I didn't touch on, like, you know, these damage things that I have when you damage a base star. You know, that's two damage, stuff like that. You have the same thing for Galactica. But uh, Raptors, or not Raptors, uh, Vipers, they can either be damaged, which can go up here, and you can use a blue card to repair them, or they can be destroyed and removed from the game entirely. I did play in one game where we were down to a single raptor. Not raptor, I keep wanting to call them raptors. Single viper. And that was one of the most tense games that I've ever played. Because you have Cylon ships closing in and you have a single viper that can actually fend them off. Um, I should also mention these. If the Cylon ships ever destroy one of these ships, then you flip it over and you lose whatever resource that is. So in that case, this matches the population symbol, so this would go down by one. So you want to protect these. That's why in the communications, if there's a bunch of Cylon ships here, you can go, all right, I get to look at two of them, 
All right, well, this one is population. This one is, what, population and morale. We don't need to lose either of those. So we're going to go ahead and move them down here where we have uh, Viper support. Because remember, they're going to attack those second to last. What do I think about Battlestar Galactica? I don't know. Let's find out. Honestly, do I recommend Battlestar Galactica if you like hidden trader games? Yes, hands down. The only downfall that I can actually see about Battlestar Galactica is the game takes about three, three and a half hours to play. It's very simple to teach. Honestly, if it wasn't for the treachery aspect, I think my daughter could probably play it. It's just she doesn't quite comprehend treachery and, you know, try to teach her not to lie to daddy, so hidden trader games probably isn't, you know, the game of choice. But the game is incredibly tense. Uh, the, you do get a couple times, however, in the Crises deck where the Cylon attack cards don't show up. Or you'll draw a bunch of them in the beginning and you're like, oh no. And then you jump away because when you jump, everything on the board is just wiped off. Because you've left the, left the fleet behind. So then you jump and you're like, alright, we're safe. And then you never draw another Cylon attack card. So that kind of takes a, lot, a little bit away. The Exodus expansion, if I'm not mistaken, adds the Cylon fleet board, which I'm really curious on. Uh, there's three expansions. There's Pegasus, uh, Exodus, and Daybreak. I definitely plan on buying all three of them. There is another game that I've heard people talk about, Dark Moon, which I'm curious about. Uh, it's basically Battlestar Galactica that can be played in an hour, but it's not as deep. But, you know, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to check that one out. But like I was saying with Battlestar Galactica, it's really simple game to teach. It's not very complicated. The hardest part is if you have one person like my father who can't, uh, you know, he can't read very well due to vision. He's got a glasses and, and generally a magnifying glass. We have to tell him what the spaces on the board do. Um, on top of that, uh, when Cylons are reading their card, you have to give them you know, the fair chance to be able to actually see what the damn card does. Also, and you know who you are, when you are revealing yourself as a Cylon, that takes your action for the turn. It specifically says, action on the card, reveal yourself as a Cylon, da-da-da-da. On top of that, which I forgot to mention over on the board, when you do reveal yourself to Cylon, your game kind of gets a little boring. You get a Super Crisis card, there's one out of four actions that you get to take every turn, and that's it. You can, uh, you still get to contribute a single card to Crises, which are really cool, um, so you, you're deliberately just fucking things over, because um, those cards in your hand are super valuable. Don't play with house rules. We've played with a few house rules, and it actually ruins what makes the game great. Play by the rules. It makes the game exponentially better. Um, but you get to, as a Cylon, you don't have nearly as much power. So staying as a hidden Cylon is generally your best bet. However, if the players narrow down, like Gaius Baltar has uh, once per game power that, and they generally wait until the, the sleeper phase, to just look at all of the loyalty cards of one player. So if everybody's like, they're a fucking Cy, you're a fracking toaster, and Gaius Baltar will go, I'm going to check their cards and look at them, and now he knows if you're loyal or not. However, if Gaius Baltar is a Cylon, do we trust him? He could be lying. He could be calling you a Cylon, and he's the Cylon, and he's trying to get suspicion off on you. And it, the, the game just gets insane tense. Um, then there's another, uh, if you happen to have both Cylon cards, which can happen, it's unlikely, but it can happen. If you have both the Cylon cards, one of the areas is the Resurrection Ship. It allows you to trade out your Super Crises, because some of them aren't that great. So just like some of the Cylon powers aren't that great. There's one that just blows up a bunch of Galactica. And then some of them aren't, the rest of them aren't really as good as that. But, you know, they're still damaging. And then you, um, but anyways, you can shuffle that in. And then you can also, one of your face-down cards, because you only reveal one, you are a Cylon card. You One of your face-down cards, you can give to another player and make the, and make them a Cylon. So it just throws a shitload of suspicion. Do we brig him? What do we do? Which brings me to my next point. You also have the Brig, which, again, these I should have... I'm kind of tired. I've recorded a couple reviews already, so sorry. But you also have the Brig, where you can call a vote, and it's a normal skill check of... What is it? Uh, you go to the Admiral's Quarters, and it's green and purple. Is it? Yeah, green and purple at difficulty 7. 
So it's going to take those cards in hand to do, but you can call a vote to send somebody to the brig. And when somebody's in the brig, they no longer draw a crisis card on their turn. They can only ever contribute a single card to any crisis. And then on top of that, they um, trying to think. They can't move or take any action. They're just stuck in the brig. So the downfall from that is if they're not a Cylon, which we've played a game, a couple games that this happens, somebody can spend the entire game in the brig. And they're like, well, I'm glad I got to play this game. Um, so you do ruin a little bit of people's fun. We generally say, you know, don't break somebody unless you're sure they're a Cylon. Because if you're a Cylon, you're just going to reveal. You don't get your power in the brig, which is why you want to bring people on top of that and stopping them from hurting crises. But if you narrow down that somebody's a Cylon, fucking toss their ass in the brig. However, uh, Pegasus, which I'm really curious how this is going to work, adds executions. If you are damn sure that somebody's a Cylon, you can blow them out of the airlock. And that just sounds awesome. But anyways, this review's gone on probably a little longer than I'd like it to. So, that's Battlestar Galactica. I cannot recommend this game enough if you like Hidden Trader games. It is by far my favorite one. And even if Dark Moon winds up being better because it's faster and hits the table more... I still think I would like this one better purely because of how, how deep the game can actually get. So, definitely pick it up. I think it's MSRP of like 40 bucks, something like that. I got it for like 15 off of eBay, and everything was brand new. So, I can't complain. I got it on a whim. And I like the game so much, I actually watched the show, so things in the game made more sense. And the, then you understand why everybody hates Guy's Baltar. So, anyways... Uh, if you can give this video a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time in the quarantine.